it is going to be a rainy morning of doing chores. We have desperately needed the rain, although I have a feeling we're going to go from not enough to way too much. So I guess I'm going to finish up my cup of coffee and get to work. Good morning, babies. You're probably going to want to stick close this morning. Good morning. <laughs> Hi, baby. Dooper. <laughs> you guys don't even want to come out. I don't blame you. It's storming out here. So it's going to be a stormy morning doing chores here. Thankfully I have a empty trash bag I keep in my barn because a lot of the feed, especially the rabbit feed, if it gets wet at all, it just disintegrates into a mush. Uh, so when I'm carrying my bucket of feed out there, I cover it with a trash bag. I'm going to head on out and get chores done. ready for breakfast? Oh yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> Go get it, Fran. <laughs> So goats really, really hate rain and do not come out when it's raining. They absolutely hate getting wet. And so with the noise and everything, as I was walking up and approaching their shelter, I kind of announced myself so that I wouldn't take them by surprise. And I will come out here a couple times today to make sure they have plenty of hay because I have a feeling it's going to be doing this a lot today. This is part of that tropical storm system coming up from the Gulf and they're not going to be out in their yard doing much grazing today because again they hate getting wet. So we'll come out here make sure they've got plenty of hay in their, in their rack over there and we'll check on them throughout the day today. guys so <clears throat> morning chores are done and it's a little bit cooler today of course from all of the the weather although it is a bit muggy <laughs> it's 
So as you can hear, it is still raining. I expect it's probably going to be doing this pretty much all day today. So I am going to be spending some time in the kitchen. I am, well, first of all, I'm going to make some more hummingbird feed because the hummingbirds are just all over it <laughs> right now. Um, I'm having to fill those hummingbird feeders about every other day right now. Uh, we've got more hummingbirds this year hanging around than we've ever had before, so it's uh, it's kind of cool. They're, they're here. I mean, you can probably hear them in the background. There's, like, at this very moment, about seven of them swirling around just a few feet behind the camera. So those of you who are new here, about... Gosh, I can't remember exactly when it was. I want to say it was around a year ago or so. Mr. Smith was on a business trip and it was just me and Jack, our youngest, who was still here at the time. We had a little bit of an incident where we had a bull in our yard. And I will put a link to that little story if you would like to watch that. Well, the lady who owns that bull lives pretty close to here and yesterday she called me and said, hey, do you want some pears? Because she had picked gobs and gobs of pears way more than she needed and she's like, I don't know what, I, what got into me, but I cannot possibly use all of these pears. So she brought me a like full-sized cooler filled with pears plus a whole nother great big basket. So today I am going to be preserving some pears. Um, I'm thinking maybe pear butter. Kind of sounds like a really good idea. And then maybe some just canned pears, um, diced pears. So that's what I'll be working on today since it's raining and I won't be able to do much of anything else. Certainly nothing outside. So that is the agenda for today. But before I go and get to work, I just wanted to share a couple things with you. Uh, the other day, I went for a little bit of a walk. A good portion of our property is thick woods, and we have a creek that runs back through there. Um, and there's a couple areas where there's some clearings. And when I visit those areas, it, it's kind of one of those, be very careful, watch your every step and be cautious sort of scenarios because where we live here, while the only snakes we've actually laid eyes on are, we saw two rat snakes a couple years ago in the chicken coop, which we relocated far away so they could be safe and so could our chickens. And then we have seen many uh, spotted king snakes, which we very much welcome the king snakes because number one, they eat rodents, which every farm deals with rodents. I don't care who you are. Uh, they are always a problem. So I completely welcome seeing king snakes around, but they also eat poisonous snakes. So if you've got king snakes around, chances are you're not gonna see any poisonous snakes or at least not very many. And the fact of the matter is, we've never laid eyes on a poisonous snake here on our farm. Now, we are in northern Alabama, so we do, of course, have copperheads. We've got cotton mouse, also known as water moccasins. And with the creek back there, I'm sure they're there somewhere. And we also have rattlesnakes. And I know several friends around the area who have seen rattlesnakes. But like I said, we've never laid eyes on a poisonous snake here on our farm. However, when I'm walking in that particular area, I definitely keep an eye out because it's really one of those uh, environments that is very conducive for snake habitats and you just, you know they're there. Um, so I'm very careful when I go out that way and uh, I, I step cautiously. But the reason I went out there a couple days ago was to do a little wild harvesting. Um, I had looked out my kitchen window, I was cleaning up, washing dishes, and I noticed a weed that had been growing along the fence line that I just never, never weed-eated it around the fence really all year. <laughs> and so it's a little weedy, and so some of those weeds have gotten pretty big, and I noticed one of them had flowered. And I'm like, is that what I think it is? So I went outside and I looked, and sure enough, it was goldenrod. 
Goldenrod is a fantastic medicinal wildflower. It is an herb that um, is good for a number of things to include cold and flu season. And so I decided since it's growing there along my fence and it was only one little you know, clump of, of the wildflower, like I bet there's some growing out there in that clearing area. And so I walked through the woods, went out to the clearing, and sure enough, I found goldenrod all over the place. And so I harvested a good bit of it and I brought it in, I washed it, uh, kind of slung it dry to get all the excess water off and then I brought it in, hung it up and I have it air drying in my kitchen over my uh, kitchen table. And I know it might look like, oh my goodness, why would you hang stuff around the light bulbs? But honestly, while I have that light over the kitchen table, this time of year we hardly ever use it and the light bulbs that we have there be, i know they look like edison bulbs and that was intentional but they're actually led so they don't get hot at all um, so if i do turn the light on while all of those herbs are hanging there drying it's not going to harm them or anything like that the other thing that i was keeping an eye out for and i knew grew in this clearing was muling Muline is another wonderful medicinal herb. It is a weed that grows all over the place and it really likes depleted soil. You will often see it growing alongside the interstate, alongside highways and medians and things like that. It's a very tall herb once it gets established. It gets really tall, kind of cone shaped in, in the structure of the plant, kind of like a skinny Christmas tree. And at the very top, it gets a stalk of yellow flowers. And so if you keep an eye out for that stalk, it makes it really easy to spot. So I have a good bit of muline also drying uh, in the house in my uh, herb drying rack that I got this year, which reminds me I've never talked about that. Um, it is a tower, it's a collapsible tower that has different levels and each one of those levels zips open and close, which is great. So you don't have to worry about cats or anything messing with those. And you just lay all of your herbs inside there and let them air dry. When you're done using it, um, you can just fold it up and store it away. And it, it takes almost no space at all when you store it. It was something that I ordered off of Amazon. It was very inexpensive. I wanna say it was like maybe $28 or something like that. And it's been very handy. And what I do when I put herbs in there, each layer or each level, I'll put a different herb and I'll take a sticky note, I'll write down what that herb is and I'll lay it in there on, on the surface with all of the herbs. That way when I go in there to collect all of the dried leaves and everything and store them away, I remember exactly which layer was which. I have several trail cameras all around the property. Uh, we put them out for a number of reasons, but of course one of the reasons we put them out there is to see what kind of wildlife is coming around. You know, if we've got coyotes hanging around or predators of some sort, it's good to know that they're coming around at night so you can make sure or make extra sure that all of your animals are up and safe. Um, you know, we've had wild hogs out here, feral swine, um, lots of bobcats, of course, and so it, it's good to be able to see, like I said, what's been hanging around. But there is one particular thing I have not yet caught on camera, and I'm hoping to. Now you may remember, um, a few weeks ago, I shared about seeing a fawn without a mother. That I had seen this fawn several times. I'd never seen a mother. I had walked up on this fawn out on the in the middle of the pasture, and um, it, it had bothered me to see that uh, situation. Well, here's an update. I don't think that fawn has found its mother. 
However, both I and Mr. Smith have now seen the fawn. And that fawn is with another fawn, an older fawn, and its mother. And so it's kind of like that little fawn who was lost or something had happened to the doe. She's found a new family. And like I said, I've seen it, Mr. Smith has seen it, and I'm hoping at some point to capture them on camera so that I can show you guys. I actually saw them out there uh, in the pasture yesterday, yesterday morning, and it was just, it was the most heartwarming thing. Oh, it was just, it was precious. Um, clearly, this doe is not that fawn's mother because it's, you know, like I said, it's got the other fawn who's definitely not the same age. We have a couple of does around here that have twins every single year, but these are not twins. Um, and so it has to be that orphan fawn. So I just wanted to share that update with all of you because I know I've had several people asking me if, if I knew any information, if there was an update and now I have one. And so with that, I'm going to wrap up the video for today. And I'm going to head into the house and uh, get to work. So thanks for hanging out with me on the rainy front porch. My name is Constance from Cosmopolitan Cornbread, and I'll talk to you all next time.